Good morning. Welcome to the June 28th, 2022 meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission. If everyone would stand with me, please. Commissioner Jim Averwater will lead us in our prayer and our pledge. Jim. Thank you. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, wonderful day you've blessed us with and all those blessings that you give us. And we ask that today you give us a wise thought and thoughtful deliberation and consideration of these matters that are important to uh, members of our community. We ask that you watch over our service people serving overseas and our first responders locally. And uh, thank you again for all these blessings. In your name we pray. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Call the roll, please, Gail. Jim Averwater. Here. Pettis Reed. Here. Mike Cush. Present. Lee Bogle. Here. Charlotte P. Rhonda Allen. David Jones. Here. Greg Lynch. Chip Pinion. Marvin Whitworth. Jeff Phillips. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Gail. Uh, we don't have any minutes to approve today, so we'll get, uh, and no items have been with, uh, withdrawn or deferred, so we'll get right to our business. Our new business, 6A, uh, we have one item that's been submitted for a preliminary plan approval. 6A1, item number is 22-1008, Pine Valley Farms, 83 lots on 35.8 acres on PUD located along East Compton Road. MHW Investment Partners is the applicant. Doug? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this property, as you stated, is located along East Compton Road. Uh, this property was originally zoned by the Board of Commissioners back in May of 2020 as Kings Mill Estates. As you can see, it's been since renamed to Pine Valley Farms. The plan overall appears to be consistent with the approved concept plan in the pattern book. I will say that uh, lots, well, it looks like they've renumbered them a little bit, but uh, where lot 60 through 69 are right there by the open space, lot 77, uh, those shifted a little bit to better uh, access that open space, but they didn't lose any open space there. They just kind of shifted the lots around to make it uh, to make it make a little more sense, quite frankly, which the, what they did is, is perfectly fine. Uh, both cul-de-sacs, as you can see, are going to have right away that are going to extend to the parcel to the west. In the event that that property ever develops, there will be some connectivity options for that property as well. The Board of Commissioners, during their deliberations on this, require turn lanes as part of this development. We have ad asked for them to be added to the plan. Of course, those are something that we will look at more closely should this be approved for the construction drawings uh, when those are submitted. But I just wanted to let you know that that was a condition of approval that was incorporated into the plan before you. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion on the drainage of this property. I know we have a couple people here that uh, might want to speak. Uh, and Mr. Phillips and I have talked about that prior to the meeting. Uh, I will say that the plan that you're looking at right here is actually was delivered to our office via email uh, yesterday. Um, I'll let Sheila kind of go over some of the particulars as far as the drainage and everything goes, but we've we haven't had a whole lot of time to, to look at uh, the changes that they have made on this, but I'll turn it over to Sheila for, you know, just some over, overview of the drainage of this area and of this property. And uh, like I said, I know there are some folks here that would like to speak on this. Of course, if that is the will of the commission, then there would have to be a suspension of the rules to allow that to happen. And we've got some pictures here that uh, they have submitted. So with that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions, but if there are none, I'll turn it over to Sheila. to do the other first. Hi, I'm not Mike. I'm Sheila. Um, I'm filling in for Mike today as he um, is on vacation, so good for him. Um, so as you guys can see, I'll probably just scroll through a few of these sheets and then we'll go over to the um, aerial imagery and kind of 
let you guys know what's what was submitted and what our concerns are with this project. This is the overall layout. Um, it doesn't look too bad until you kind of start digging into what's actually going on out in the field. And I know we have some concerned homeowners, so we are um, super sensitive to the issues that are going on out there. So we have a lot of water flowing in, coming in kind of right in this area. There was already a small pond there. Um, our concerns were before that this lot was pretty small and the pond looked pretty small. You got about 700 acres draining into this one area. We have, I think, eight 24 inch pipes going under East Compton Road. I think one, I think eight, yeah. And we already know that those are um, undersized for that area. In this plan, there's no plan to upgrade or resize those. And if we did, we could probably cause potential flooding downstream. So we don't desire those to changed out or put a large box culvert or anything like that in because in a minute you'll see what's downstream of the water that's going to be coming this way. Um, we also have people who have concerns about water on the most southern side of the project. Um, bear with me as I kind of scroll through some things. So this is the more southern area. This is going to be the step field. Um, they do have plans to put in a cutoff ditch right up through here. This is going to be a drainage easement. So we're going to try to get some of this water that's coming towards these two lots. I'm going too fast. Just tell me to slow down. So it's going to a couple of homeowners lots down here. These do have houses on them. I'll show you guys an aerial in just a few minutes. I just want you to get the concept first. Um, so they would put like a kind of a ditch in here and we reroute this water north um, towards the pond. So the idea is that we would like to probably try to over detain the pond, make sure it's larger than our minimum standards, to be able to handle additional water that could come there. There's not a whole lot of water that this is going to pick up that's going towards these two lots though because the water is flowing perpendicular to the contour lines. These are our contour lines, so it's flowing this way. So it's really only gonna pick up a small amount of water, kind of this little ridge right here, which picking up some, I guess, is better than none when you're looking at a flooding situation. Um, I think we also, let me see if I can find those sheets. So like all of this water that's come in into the roads will be taken north to the pond that is also picking up the 700 acres. But we will definitely want to split that water up. You, won't, you don't want that water coming into your pond. So all of this water will be routed up through here and then back through and across the pipes that are already out there. So that's just kind of a general scope of our concerns on drainage. I'll go over to the aerial mapping. Um, this is an imagery from 2020. You can see a little bit of water standing, but it, just looking at the aerial imagery, you don't really see a huge problem. We are gonna show you some pictures that do show a huge problem. Um, and I kind of thought Greg was gonna be here to also talk about some concerns. I know a lot of the neighbors have contacted Greg with the highway department about complaints out there in this area. And we're requesting additional pipes and different things put in, which his concern, I'm pretty sure, was if we upgrade or do anything, we're gonna cause issues downstream. So when I turn the contours on, you guys are gonna kinda get a better picture of what's going on in the area. This is Pine Valley, this is the subdivision area. Here are the two lots that were on the layout. And then here's our contour lines. So just, I'll give it a few minutes to um, catch up. We have a huge drainage area coming down and through here. And you can kind of see where it goes right now. And this is where it's going under those eight 24 inch diameter pipes. And it kind of splits and goes this way and kind of around and through. 
this property here, which is where it's always been going. And then we have some drainage that comes around this way and also splits and goes around this guy's property, um, this property owner here. So we have a couple of structures that are kind of in the drainage path or very, very close to the drainage path. So that is also a concern. Um, did I get to those pictures? Yeah, internet, right? Minimize, okay, give me just one more second. Okay, these were submitted by a homeowner. This is the second lot south When were these taken? Anybody know? Well, the, uh, the, the, the owners, the, the property owners are here. I think this is what part of what she wanted to, to speak right. on. So. so I'll just show you guys and then they can, if you guys choose to suspend the meeting and hear from them, they can tell you when they were taken and how often this occurs, that they get water in their crawl space. So like I said, if you're looking at the aerial imagery, it doesn't, usually we have a lot of imagery that shows really bad flooding in our county. Um, we can go all the way back to the 2010 flood maps. I know Mike preaches flooding probably at every meeting. Um, so it's just another day of us preaching what we do and trying to protect the homeowners. Um, these are just some images that was submitted to us this week, correct? Or today, yesterday? Well, last, last week, last week. These were submitted last week. Um, they have previously, I think, submitted pictures to Mike so he also has had some pictures of this said property. Now those, those last three or four larger pictures that you're seeing, those were actually added on uh, this morning because uh, I had an email when I got to the office this morning that I received yesterday evening, so I incorporated those into the, the, third, the smaller pics earlier were all uh, what we got were, that I scanned in uh, I got those Friday, and these ones came this, uh, well, last night, but I put them in this morning. So uh, my assumption would be spring of this year, since we have the spring leaves on the trees. And everything's starting to turn green. So that's the pictures that we received. I'll go back over to the, um, And you guys can see which one. So these were submitted from this property owner right here at 4082 East Compton. I don't think we've received any pictures from 4393. I don't, I don't think we've heard from them. Um, so as you can kind of see, this property is in a bit of a bowl. So that's why all of this fills up. You can see the pink enclosed contours means it's in a bowl. I know Mike's preached to you guys before about um, enclosed contours and what happens when we build property in bowls. Um, you know, we like to try to get those properties now when they come through high and dry. We raise the elevations. We make sure that the houses are higher than the spillover elevation, which in this case would be the road. Um, I think that pretty much kind of covers the general overview of that. Or is there anything else that you guys would like me to uh, talk about? We've had a request from uh, the neighbors and a couple of the neighbors in that area. I think uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jakes, if I'm not mis mistaken, would like to uh, address um, the Planning Commission. Uh, and we'll have to have a suspension of our rules to do that. Is there a move to suspend the rules to allow Mr. and or Mrs. Jakes to uh, address the commission? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please say aye. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jakes. Uh, if, if I could just ask you a particular question. This thing has been before the 
Planning Commission, the County Commission, we've had public hearings, where were you? Uh, I, I didn't get the notice of it. I think my wife and my neighbors knew about it, but uh, I didn't think it would actually ever go through. Uh, once again, the, the, we've had public hearings and we usually allow uh, three minutes for a presentation. You can take uh, as long as you need, just be careful of the time. And I'll be very brief. Thank you. My name is John Jakes and I do live in the house right here, uh, 4082 East Compton Road. We bought this house in 2005 and the previous owner said, no, it doesn't flood. And so in the last 17 years that we've owned the house, we've had 12 or more significant water issues. In the May 2010 flood, we had to have a FEMA claim. If you could back up to the preceding picture. Uh, no, go, go forward one. Oh yeah, this is the one I want right here. Um, right here, thank you. Um, and so this is the picture taken in March of 2021 when we had a pretty sizable rain. And if you'll see there, the water line along my ditch, that's how high the water got, almost crested the road. And had it got one more inch, it would have touched the subfloor in my house and probably ruined uh, everything in my house. Now, the, the engineering on this project is probably totally inadequate because all of that water flows into, like Mr. Hughes says, the bowl that's in my yard. So the, the question that I have is, how do I remediate that? Well, I can move my house. I've only got all that water drains under one small pipe under my driveway and then one small pipe under the road, which is inadequate. So I could move my house. I could increase the drainage, which risk moving water downstream further or um, just wait for a water event from the development of this subdivision behind me. Unfortunately, there's nothing that I can do engineering wise, I've had some engineers look at it, to impede this water from coming into this bowl that's basically where my house sits all the way to the road. Now, the, the problem that I have with the engineering of this project is midway between where my house is and where the corner of this property is, where one of those entrances into this subdivision comes out, in this May of 2021 flood, the water exceeded the top of my boots over the road. There was so much water coming off of that property, not down by the retaining pond where they're gonna build it, but right in the middle of that property where one of those entrances is gonna go, um, it was actually probably eight inches deep across the road and the road was impassable. So I just ask you to consider that. Um, I would be willing, I've had engineers to come out, I'd be willing to try to speak to somebody about how I could remediate this. My fear is that if this land gets disturbed, it's gonna push or move more water onto my property and eventually I'm gonna have a breach into my house. I got within one inch of the subfloor in this May of 2021 flood. This actually has receded pretty substantially when I took this picture but it came within one inch of the subfloor in my house. And so all of this water comes into the bowl where my house is at. Now, if, if, if we could go back in time, a house should have never been approved to be built on this lot, but we probably didn't have the engineering and the technology, so there's nothing we can do about that. I just ask you to consider that um, because we are gonna be the direct uh, uh, result of this land being disturbed behind us and it's all going to flow not just from that land but the 600 acres behind it all flows into basically this bowl so i just ask you to consider that for me thank you mr jakes i'd like to <clears throat> ask if the uh, applicant uh, is here and if you could shed some light on some of the questions that uh, Mr. Jakes has just brought to our attention. Yes, sir, Matt Taylor of SEC, and uh, we talked with staff during our pre-application meeting about some of these concerns. Um, most of the water that flows through our site does not flow toward Mr. Jakes's house. Uh, matter of fact, we're gonna take area off of Mr. Jakes's 
property uh, with our drainage design. And so if you're looking at, can you put the master plan back up? Yeah, the master plan if you can, Sheila. Thank you. So on this, if you see uh, where si lot 60 through 69 are, which is on the bottom left of this screen, uh, that area will be diverted away from Mr. Jakes's house. Uh, in addition, um, a significant portion of the step field area will be diverted away from Mr. Jake's house. Uh, the open space, lot six, lot 79, and the step field, lot 80, as well as lot 70 through 74 will be diverted away from Mr. Jake's house with this drainage plan. And so anything that we're gonna do under this plan is going to improve Mr. Jakes's situation. I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you that we're going to solve his issue because most of the water that goes toward Mr. Jakes's house never crosses our property. Most of it is to the south. The property, that this large drainage basin um, that Ms. Huffmeyer mentioned earlier uh, goes through our property and into uh, about where lot 75 is, which is in the upper right-hand corner of this master plan. And so we will continue to manage that, plus take additional area off of Mr. Jakes's house. So, and I think that's um, as much as we can do with this project. I'm happy to meet with Mr. Jakes in the field um, or at my office to talk through that drainage plan in more detail, but this plan will not uh, make his problem worse. It will help his issue. Questions? Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Uh, Matt, do you have a, a pointer? Or Sheila, Doug, do you have a pointer? Well, uh, okay. uh, Matt, w walk this committee through, I, 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 I know you've said it, but it, see if you can walk us through by your pointer. How, how are you gonna relieve some of Mr. Jake's water issues? I, 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 okay. Essentially right now, we're lot 60 through 69, the step field, and then lot 70 through 74, and the open space up front. Approximately that area, obviously it's not that clean, but it, approximately that area flows toward Mr. Jake's house today. Just to be clear, Mr. Jake's house is the right there, right, Sheila? It's in the bottom right-hand corner right there. That where one. she's circling, yes. Okay, okay. And so what we have done is we propose inside of our open space will have a ditch to intercept any water coming off of that area and diverting it toward, I think we call that boot, Black Creek Road right there into that drainage system. And then along the southern edge of open space lot 79, we have a ditch planned that would divert water off of Mr. Jake's. And so we'll capture the water running from there. Now there's some inside that step field area that would continue, but it's a, a pretty minimal amount compared to what is there today. And we would capture that too, except for you can't grade in those areas. And so we're gonna take area, therefore water off of Mr. Jake's house with this plan. Okay, so you're, you're not adding any additional, and if I understand you right, by design, y you, you should alleviate some of the water buildup in his pit, his hole, his depression, whatever you want to call it. Yes, sir. And I think Ms. Huffmeyer and I think Mr. Jakes both said it, you know, the house should not have been built that low. Um, I think with the checks that engineering department has instituted in the last few years, it would not happen today. And so um, I think this house, I don't know, 15 or 20 years old, if I understand Mr. Jake's right. So the water, the, uh, the other 600 acres he mentioned and Sheila mentioned earlier, I, I guess that's to the north above Yes, sir. Of lots six and seven, that, that stretch there? Yes, sir. Where Some does that, how is that water being diverted or channeled or 
all the all the pipes that Miss uh, Huffmeyer was uh, mentioning earlier is approximately at the intersection of East Compton and Conagree, if I'm saying that correctly. All those are there, and so all that water, that is where it goes today, that's where it will continue to go in the future. We've actually rearranged this area to try to provide some additional storage there as well, um, working with the engineering department as well. Okay, Sheila, have, are we confident that those eight 24-inch pipes have been cleaned recently and are flowing full when no obstructions, no trash, no timber, no beaver dams, no nothing like I that? I do not know that, but um, I'm fairly sure that people would have called our highway department. If they have a complaint, they go out and immediately take care of it. Um, Greg was going to be here today. He must have had something really important come up. Um, this is also the area where he's talking about the road was under, under like eight inches of water. So this area is, we're routing more water to this area and this area is a concern. Okay. We didn't get this plan until yesterday and I'm, I've been in FEMA training yesterday. Yeah. And I think tomorrow, that but, so we didn't have time to review it. Mike has not reviewed it. And that was my biggest concern, that we were not given sufficient time to review this. Well, I think in fairness, we met about last Thursday and was asked to rearrange some of these lots. And so we made those changes on Friday and yesterday morning. I will say that our drainage calculations are always done with the construction plans. And so everything we've done up to this point has been, um, you know, they are preliminary in nature. And so if we have to lose lots to make sure that this works, that's what we do. It's what we do with every plan. And so, but we feel confident. We've designed this site before. We designed it uh, back in 2006. It came before this commission. Um, we had a working concept then and it'll continue to get better. Uh, so um, uh, I don't think those things have changed. You heard uh, Mr. Jake's uh, statement about uh, how often that his yard um, floods or has water standing in it. Have you taken a look at his property? We have. To, to see if there's anything that he's missed that he might be able to do? I, I don't think that he, ha I think that uh, what he's seeing there is that his house and his lot is below the road and that pipe is about even with the elevation of his yard. And so, you know, in order for that to, that water to build up and pass through, you know, it's probably filling up that pipe and that's, that's where that water goes today. And so without raising his house and filling his yard, I don't think there's a lot he can do. I think that he's, I don't know who's been out there to give him that guidance. I would say that he is accurate. Uh, so without um, somehow lowering the pipe, um, under the road or raising his lot, I would say that uh, his assessment's correct based on my preliminary analysis. Thank you. And that's why we think that, you know, the best thing to do with his situation is try to divert, divert water to a more capable system. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks. Thank you. recommendation from staff at this time I mean from a zoning standpoint uh, you know beyond the little changes and tweaks that he's made uh, I mean from our standpoint I don't think we have concerns just from a, looking at the zoning of the property and that conformance to the pattern book I think the biggest issue that, again, Sheila had mentioned this is, you know, we just haven't had a lot of time to go over the changes that were made. Now, I agree with what, you know, Matt was saying, you know, typically they don't do the uh, drainage calculations and things until they submit construction drawings, which is, it's the nature of a preliminary plan. We change the process specifically for that. Uh, but when there are issues that potentially can affect the overall design of the development along with uh, you know, possible impacts to adjacent property. I mean, sometimes it's something that we would like to see. So, I mean, a lot of it's going to depend on, 
the planning committee, if they're comfortable with what uh, is being presented today and is confident that staff can work through those things, then I think we're all right. But, you know, typically we'd like more time to go through some of these issues, especially from the drainage standpoint. Just the timing of this is just didn't work out very well. So. Mr. Chairman? Pettis. Um, with the comments made from the staff there, I, I understand uh, everybody's concerned with this as the homeowners as well as developers there that are working with this too. But when our staff only receives that information by email on just the evening prior to coming here, that's a little, little late opportunity for them to go through and do what they've got to do to explain to us, which uh, we don't have either a time to see. So, you know, seeing what their concerns are and the importance of this as far as what has been done to correct some of this, I think we need to give them more time to oversee this and, and take a look at what we're going there. And I just think it might be appropriate this time is that we just defer this, giving them that opportunity to do so. So I'd make that motion to defer. We have a motion to defer. Sheila, let me ask you a question. Mike, you need a second before we discuss. Second. Thank you. Now, Sheila, would that would that help? A deferment for for your department and staff, or would that, if we went ahead and voted today, it's still the, the drainage is still going to be worked out. Whether he needs to move or lose more lots for open area, I mean, it sounds like all that heavy lifting is yet to come. So I'm 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 not sure if deferring it is going to make that big a difference at this point. So walk me through that. It's just having a better level of confidence that this is actually going to work. Um, I actually sent comments back on the first review requesting a little more detail on the drainage. And the comment we received back was that's not required for a preliminary. But if my comment to you is that I need this, I need this. And the only reason we met with him was that I had a pre-con on Thursday, so I grabbed the consultant before he left and said, can you sit down and look at this with me? So I felt like my concerns were felt and heard at the last minute, and that was not because we weren't listening. And we are listening. We're listening to the homeowners, and we want to listen to everyone. I think we need a, a more detailed drainage map to go with this and some level of confidence of what detention they're going to provide. And they basically increased the common space almost by maybe doubled it. So the fact that the initial submittal had a very small area for the pond in the open space is severely concerning. Yes, they do lose lots as we move through projects. and. But it's really hard on us to tell people they're going to have to lose lots. Matt. So the size of the comment space that we resubmitted yesterday has nothing to do with the pond size. The pond size of the original comment space that was on this plan was from the design 15 years ago. The water and area has not changed. We did those changes at the request of staff trying to show that we're working. And so um, has nothing to do with the size. It had to do with we're trying to work with staff. And as far as lots being lost, I'll have that conversation with my client because we're not going to have houses getting wet on our design. It's my design. It is my stamp. It is my calculations. And so that's not good. So I'll have that conversation with my client if I have to. And we do every time. So I just want to make that clear that it's not up to, you know, we, we will work with staff as we always do through construction plans uh, to do those um, calculations to the satisfaction 
of the requirements and of staff. And, and we've lost lots in the past. I'm sure we'll lose lots in the future. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Matt. I'm glad you came back up here, Matt. Um, I am. I'm just gonna ask you the question that I think probably the neighbors wanna know, mm -hmm. which is, if you get it wrong, who's responsible? Uh, if it's my mistake, then me and my insurance company. And so that is how it is on every project. And um, so thankfully for the past 40 years, 30 something years, that's not, been a regular occurrence if it ever has been to my knowledge so and the only other question I have is I know sometimes when and we haven't talked about this level of expertise in a while we've not needed it but I know sometimes when we talk about overly complicated water issues a hydrologist is consulted is this one of those times where one would be needed or you feel like it's not needed no I mean we in this case we know you know we know how much area is going there we've delineated the watershed uh, we'll calculate that runoff and so, uh, and provide those calculations. So definitely uh, everything uh, we can do. If it gets outside of our expertise, then we routinely go to an outside consultant. So we're, we're not afraid to do that. That's part of our charge by the, by the state, by the public. Um, the public is uh, one of the people we have to protect. It's not just our client. Other discussion on the motion? Jim? Um, I just have a comment. I, I, I'm wondering if, um, you know, this is preliminary plan, and I think it's typical that after a preliminary, which is preliminary, is approved, then the you go to the next step of doing more in-depth construction analysis. Um, so we may be jumping the gun by doing the construction analysis before we do the preliminary plan. Um, I, I heard I heard the applicants say that they will reduce the quantity. Uh, they can't cure the neighbor's problem, but they said that they can at least contribute, make some, some small contribution to improving. So uh, I just feel like we should allow them to continue on with the construction. I will uh, kind of add on to what Sheila was talking about as far as the plan itself. Uh, sometimes when we ask for this information, um, again, there are, we have reasons for doing what we do. You know, we just don't ask for something because, uh, you know, it's, it's Tuesday and we thought it'd be a good idea. You know, we, we have a reason for asking for these things. When we met with the design engineer last uh, week, um, of course, Mike and Sheila were, were meeting with them and they called me and asked me some questions. Some of the changes that they were talking about making would have risen to the level of requiring a complete amendment to the back to the pattern book, which would have to go back through the board of commissioners, planning commission, et cetera. Um, I think that's also part of the reason why we'll ask for certain information on the front end that may or may not be necessarily required. It's the fact that when we look at these things, we know that there is the potential for design changes and some of those design changes could impact the ability to move this forward. For instance, one of the things they were talking about is maybe just having one way in and out, like Black Creek be the main entrance as opposed to, was that Congaree Drive? Um, that would have required a complete amendment to the uh, to the pattern book to go through. So, basically, at that point, you're you're approving a plan. If like, let's say for the sake of argument, this gets approved today, you're approving this. Then it has to turn around, go back through the entire process to change it, then come back here again for preliminary plan approval. So, when we look for and request for some of this information, sometimes it's to eliminate the need to constantly bring things back through the process trying to make that more efficient. That way you're not looking at the same project over and over again. So I just wanted to at least throw that out there. I, I get the comments that were stated, but uh, just so everybody knows, when we ask for something, you know, we generally have a pretty good reason why we're asking for it. Any other questions or comments? We've got a motion and a second to defer.
We have a motion and a second to defer. Item 22-1008, Pine Valley Farms. Other questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I have one question for Matt, if you don't mind. Rhonda. Yes, ma'am. Would it be a hardship on your client for us to postpone this for two weeks to increase um, staff's comfort level? No, I'll be happy to meet with uh, Ms. Huffmeyer to find out exactly what level of detail uh, that we can provide in the next two weeks. Are you talking about for the, was it July 11th? July 11th. We put you back on the July 11th I think agenda. We can certainly do that. And, um, um, you know, we can't design the whole subdivision, but we can, you know, if, if she can give me what calculations she wants to see there, whether it's a pre versus post analysis toward Mr. Um, Jacques uh, for, Jake's, thank you, I um, apologize. His house, we're happy to provide that. It's whatever they're looking for. Um, you know, uh, I'm happy to do that. Other questions? Um, we also wanna make sure that the road doesn't flood. Cause I mean, I also heard that the road was under eight inches of water. So it's not just Mr. Jake's property, but it's also the, County Highway Department road situation, and I really wish Greg was here, so I apologize that that side has not been told also. Thank you, Sheila. We all done? All those in favor of the motion to defer, item 22-1008, please say aye. aye. Opposition, the motion to defer carries, thank you. Now, if I could clarify, is that a deferral for until the July 11th meeting? Okay. D Doug, do you know what we'll be looking at? Oh yeah, very good. It's going to be a, a yeah, yeah. I think we got it. Thank you. Uh, item six B. We have one item that's submitted for final plat approval. Six B one. Item two two dash two zero four seven. Jeff Adams subdivision, three lots on 4.8 acres, zoned RM, located along Tulip Hill Drive. Jeff and Sarah Adams are the applicants. Doug? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, this property currently contains two houses. They'd like to be able to divide the property so that each house would be on its own lot. Uh, they would also have a third lot on the property, which is lot one. You can see lots two and three both will have uh, the existing houses and lot one will be a new buildable lot at that time. Uh, minimum pad and floor elevations have been established for lot one since it is impacted by the 100 year floodplain. Uh, there is also a fire hydrant within a thousand feet of the property and so it doesn't appear that any waivers are needed. I will say that there is one item that I did want to bring to your attention on lot one. You'll see there's a barn on the property uh, and Sheila's kind of yeah, zooming into it right there. Um, that basically when this property is subdivided becomes an accessory structure with nothing to be accessory to. There's no principal structure on the lot. Uh, we do run into this situation from time to time. If they wish to keep the barn there, they will need to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals before this is recorded uh, to ask for a special exception to have the accessory structure on the property prior to the principal structure being built. I'm not aware of any time frame for that. Whenever a house is built, the whole point becomes moot anyway. But uh, I did want to make that uh, point uh, to the uh, uh, commission that this would require board of zoning appeal approval before we would record it. So with that, all the other comments have been addressed. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Doug, I have a question. On the side setback against the neighboring property on the boner side, it looks like nine feet Yes. for the house. Yes. There that, was a, yeah, there was a variance that was actually granted for that back in 2002. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Doug, once again, staff's recommendation. Yep. Uh, subject to staff, com approval subject to staff comments, just to deal with the barn. Now, if they decide that they're just going to remove the barn, it, they can just take it off the plat and, you know, it's kind of not an issue after that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with staff comments. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve item 
2047 Jeff Adams subdivision, three lots. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. aye. There any opposition? Motion to approve carries, thank you. 6C, we have two items that have been submitted for site plan approval, 6C1, the item number is 22-3010, Radford's Wrecker Service, construction of 2,400 square foot shop on 11.18 acres, zoned PUD, located along Double Springs Road. John Radford is the applicant. Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, this property was rezoned to plan development back in August of 2020. Uh, the applicant plans to store wrecked vehicles on the property short term and also use it for his base of operations. Uh, this is consistent with the pattern book that was approved uh, for the property. The pattern book originally showed the proposed building located on the opposite side of the gravel storage yard. Uh, the plan they submitted had it next to it, which was more than what we could approve administratively as far as distance, as opposed to trying to go through the process and get an amendment. They ended up putting it where the uh, pattern book said it was uh, supposed to be. So I just tell you that just as a, a little bit of background uh, for that. Uh, we have looked at the comments on this. Uh, most of our comments have been addressed. I have been working with the design engineer as far as the landscape plan. Uh, we're still, that's still kind of a work in progress. We're still uh, going through that. I don't think that's necessary to, to hold up anything. We can handle that. Uh, typically landscaping is the last thing that's done on the property. That way they avoid damaging any of the trees that are planted and whatnot. Uh, there's also a comment about the, uh, the new driveway pipe. The pipe appears to be under the existing ground. Uh, we asked them to uh, add some grades and spot shots. Uh, it looks like the uh, comment said that the uh, existing spot elevations were shown incorrectly and been revised. However, I don't think they have been. So we'll work with them on that. But besides those comments, the, the plan itself is, is not in, in bad shape. It's, it, we're, we're comfortable moving forward with those couple of outstanding items. So uh, with that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions for staff? I have one question, um, Mr. Chairman. So Doug, I, I know the zoning's already been approved for this. I just have a question on like wrecker services where he's gonna store wrecked vehicles. Who monitors, you know, what ground water quality and contamination, things like that? How do we make sure that that's not a hazard? Right, well, I mean, that's all handled through the, the, the state, of course. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they have some sort of uh, regulations thing that they have to abide by. Of course, we'll make sure, you know, through the process that uh, the ponds and everything are protected uh, for any kind of uh, groundwater contamination. There is a sinkhole, uh, you can see right above the, uh, where the, yeah, Sheila's uh, doing that. We'll make sure that those are protected the way that they need to be, especially during the construction of the property. But, um, you know, obviously if we get some complaints or anything, that's something we can look into, but that's gonna be mostly the state guidelines and things that they have to abide by. Is this type of business permitted, do you know? It permitted. Like, no, I mean, is it, is it permitted? Like, is, does the state issue permits for this type of business so that they know to monitor it and? I don't know the answer to that. I can find out, but off the top of my head, I don't, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. She, okay, like Sheila has I got you, Rhonda. Um, so during the, um, I've been working with Chris McGuire on this from Huddleston Steel and um, have also made those same exact comments. So we're gonna add a riprap berm around the sinkhole area and it's gonna stay in place. So because we couldn't really, like the whole thing is kind of in a, well, not the whole thing, but a lot of it floods, a lot of it's in a bowl. Um, I can kind of show you that, those pictures. So my concern also was the contam contamination to the sinkhole. Um, because they're going to be using the sinkhole as their drainage, they will have to get an injection well permit from the state of Tennessee, from TDEC, um, the, the Department of Environment and Conservation. Chris already knows this. I've already made him aware of that. They will not be allowed to proceed with the pre-construction meeting until they obtain their injection well permit from the state. Um, if the state requires additional testing or additional measures, construction measures or anything like that, that will come during the injection well permit. They'll tell them what they have to do, okay? Um, so we are proposing to go ahead and do that, leave some measures, being, we call them best management practices, we will leave those in place. And they aren't just gonna be for the er erosion control side of the project. 
and he's he said that they're happy to do that and provide that um, because we do have quite a bit of flooding on this lot we've also raised the pads so that it will be high and dry that so they will not have to worry about their um, new structure being underwater um, is the site does have a lot of this is the site and this is kind of the bowl you can see they are kind of in a bowl um, and this is the sinkhole that we were discussing I can um, probably have different imagery that you can see all the water on but he's aware of that um, the applicant is aware of that the engineer is aware of that and we've designed the new structure to be a foot above the spillover elevation which is the road double springs so it'll be one foot above because it's not livable space and those are our regs for local flooding this would not be considered FEMA flooding this would be local flooding and when they go to pull their building permits they'll have to do a local elevation certificate to ensure that it's at the right elevation yeah you're welcome Are there any other questions for me? I'll make a motion to approve subject to staff comments. We have a motion and a second to approve item 22-3010 Radford's record service. Other questions? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. aye. Opposition, motion to approve carries. Thank you. 6C2, item 22-3011, Holden Concrete Products, phase two. Construction of 33,000 square foot pipe manufacturing plant on 43 acres zoned HI located along Shelbyville Pike, which is highway uh, US 231, Tom, Thomas Holden is the applicant, Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, site plan for phase one was approved by the Planning Commission back in May 2016. This is just a, a further expansion of that property, as you stated, for a concrete pipe manufacturing area. Uh, this property is zoned heavy industrial, as you stated, so this is a permitted use. We did send several comments to the design engineer. Uh, again, just a, a couple of things we're still working on. Uh, basically, uh, some of the, the parking calculations aren't quite adding up, but we can uh, work with the applicant and the design engineer for that. Um, also, the landscape plan, again, it's still a work in progress like it was on the uh, Radford. We're still working through that. Again, not as a uh, major of an issue. We can definitely uh, work with the applicant on that. And uh, they're still waiting on, our engineers still waiting on a drainage map uh, for this. But again, nothing here that uh, we feel a deferral being necessary for this. We're comfortable moving forward uh, as long as we get those issues worked out. So with that, again, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Doug. Questions for staff? I'll make a motion to approve subject to staff comments. We have a motion and a second to the, approve the site plan for item 22-3011, Holden Concrete Products, phase two. Other questions? All those in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Opposition, motion to approve carries, thank you. Item seven, staff reports and other business. Uh, so seven one, the subdivision regulation amendments, cul-de-sac with. Doug. Yes, sir. Uh, you'll recall at the uh, last, I guess that was the last day meeting, not, not quite yet. The last day meeting, we had some discussion about making some changes to our regulations uh, regarding cul-de-sac width, again, to help uh, with the um, to be consistent with uh, the fire code. Uh, our fire marshal, Josh, Sa Josh Sanders, is here also. They're looking to make some changes to the fire code as far as the cul-de-sac width is concerned. Uh, during that meeting, you would ask us to look at what maybe the city of Murfreesboro was doing and, and whatnot. Uh, Murfreesboro's 
uh, requirements are pretty much the same as ours. They don't have any plans to make any changes at this time. Uh, Smyrna, however, we did talk with them. Uh, well, I guess I say talk, email, conversed with them. And they're also in the process of making changes similar to what we're looking at for cul-de-sac with, I think they're actually gonna go a little wider than even what we're proposing. Uh, we're proposing 96 feet. I think they were looking at 100 feet for the actual width of the paved area on a cul-de-sac. Uh, I think that's something they're working through right now, but I just wanted to at least report back to you. Uh, we have that uh, coming to the July 11th meeting. We already advertised it uh, with the 30 days it's required uh, for subdivision regulations. Uh, so I just wanted to give you just a quick update on that. So if there's no questions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them if there are, but if not, we can move on to the next item. Okay. Any questions? Item 7-2, administrative plat approval presentation. Doug? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to just do a quick update here on our uh, platting requirements based on some changes to state law that recently took effect. Uh, the county commissioners who are in the room on the planning commission uh, got a little of this yesterday, but I just want to kind of go through the, the process and kind of kind of tell you what's been going on, what is allowed now and what staff recommends we do moving forward with things so you want to hand me the keyboard i can but the keyboard the keyboard i don't need the mouse yeah okay thank you okay okay so first thing i want to talk about and this whole presentation is on your ipads as well now it won't have the pretty graphics and uh you know animations that i, that I plugged into it with the powerpoint but you'll just have to live with that uh but we have uh, three different subdivision categories that we have the first one is major and this comes directly out of our subdivision regulations it's any number of lots that include one or more of the following you can see extended streets public rights of way improvements within rights of way dedication of right of way consistent with the county's long-range transportation plan and anything that requires construction drawings which is typically what we see new roads uh, drainage infrastructure those kind of things so if it doesn't meet any of those conditions listed under a major subdivision it's classified as a minor so this would be the plats that you look at let's say someone's got 10 acres along an existing road they're not making any real changes no adding no roads anything like that they're just basically going two acre two acre two acre two acre five lots doesn't matter again the number but uh, nothing none of those conditions exist so we would consider those minor subdivisions and then the third is kind of a kind of a, a subsection of a minor if you will a partition which is no more than two lots so basically one or two lots and again no new streets or public facilities a lot of the plats that we approve administratively fall under the uh, partition rule mm -hmm. so when it comes to the review process for a major and again this comes right out of our regulations there's a pre-application conference with the planning and engineering staff a preliminary plan is submitted it's similar to what we saw today uh, the construction plans are then submitted for staff review. Those don't go to the Planning Commission. Those are staff level approval. And then finally, a final plat is submitted for Planning Commission approval. Now that's kind of the 30,000 foot view of the process. There's things in there like making sure a uh, surety is placed for drainage and roads, uh, as builts are done, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, that just kind of gives you uh, just an overview of the process. For a minor, it's, a, it's similar, but not quite as involved. Uh, of course, we always wanna have a pre-application conference, even if it's just uh, for some of these smaller ones, uh, it could be just as easily as the surveyor calls us up and say, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. We pull it up on our map and say, okay, we see what you're trying to do. We understand, okay, yeah, go ahead and, and do what you wanna do. And then it's the middle for, of a final plat for either planning commission or staff approval, depending if it needs uh, planning commission approval, which gets into the approval process. For a major, uh, you will see that planning commission approval is required, and that goes for the preliminary plan, uh, like we considered today, even though that one was deferred, or for a final plat for a larger section. For minors and partitions, it's just a little bit different. The state law, before it was changed, allows staff to administratively approve subdivisions that contain no more than two lots, require no waivers to the subdivision regulations. So essentially, any plat that has three lots or more, or any division with waivers has to be brought to the Planning Commission for your consideration and ultimate approval. And again, that's consistent with 
what was in uh, Tennessee Code Annotated 13-3-401, which leads us to the changes that were made. Uh, public Chapter 994 has made changes to these platting requirements. And the biggest changes are what's allowed to be approved administratively. So again, what was allowed prior is you could approve, staff could approve up to two lots administratively, as long as they didn't require waivers. Now what the state has allowed is administrative approval of a final subdivision plat can be done by staff if they meet these criteria. No more than 25 lots if the development received preliminary approval through the Regional Planning Commission or no more than five lots if the development did not require preliminary plan approval, and this is plat because that's the language they used in the, in the law, through the Regional Planning Commission and no waivers are required. Now I will point out that this process is permissive. Okay, this is not something that we have to do. It is only the law was written in such a way that it, it, it made it permissive. Some localities don't do administrative plats at all. That's perfectly fine. They can do that. They can continue doing that. What well, the, the biggest change that they made other than that was the authority cannot be delegated to staff by the planning commission unless approved by the legislative body. That was the reason for the resolution that came before the county commission yesterday. Uh, Mr. Christensen and I chatted about this and I know he was having some conversations with some of his uh, colleagues in other counties. This was never in there before, the authority having to be delegated by the legislative body. So in essence, what apparently has happened is all these localities that have been doing this for years, like in our case, I mean, we've been doing one or two lot plats pretty much as long as I've been here administratively. Uh, all of a sudden, well, it looks like there's a question as to, is that process still okay? Do we have to get the authority by the county commission to do it now? And we felt that it was in our best interest to go ahead and request that. So that's what we have right now. The, the resolution that went to the Board of Commissioners yesterday just allowed us to continue doing what we've been doing for years, one and two lots administratively. So the big question that I wanted to discuss with you all today, and that falls under this last slide, options or recommendations, there are, and we have several options. We could continue the current approval process that I discussed earlier, the one that we're currently under. You know, we do one or two lot administratively, if they require waivers, they come before you just like anything else. You could ask staff to approve plats consistent with what is allowed in public chapter 994, which would mean up to 25 lots with uh, preliminary plan approval or five lots that don't require a preliminary plan approval. Or on the flip side of that, you could just say, you know what, we want to see all the plats that come through here. You could just say, we're not gonna allow staff to have the authority to approve any plats administratively. And there are localities in the state to do that. They'll say, we wanna see everything that comes through here. We don't care if it's a lot line shift. We don't care if it's a one lot, a one lot subdivision. We wanna see everything that comes through here. Now our recommendation, drum roll please, would be to recommend to the Board of Commissioners that the staff be allowed to approve subdivision plats of up to five lots that do not require waivers or any subdivision that would require a preliminary plan, or in other words, a major subdivision. Uh, the only thing that would change would be increasing the amount of lots that we could do administratively from two lots to five. Again, we wouldn't, anything, even if we had a four lot preliminary plan come through, even if it was four lots, we would still say that has to come back to the board of commi or the uh, planning commission for their approval. Uh, personally, I don't think anybody should have the authority, any staff should have the authority to approve a 25 lot subdivision, especially if it had to go through the Planning Commission for preliminary plan approval. I think that's a stretch too far, personally. So I'm okay with the, with the five lots. I think that might help things. I, I did a little bit of research into this before the meeting, just seeing what our, our plat load looked like so far this year. So far, not counting this one today, we had 23 final plats that were submitted for Planning Commission review that have come before you. This would have affected seven. In other words, you still would have had 16 that would have come before you. The other seven would have been like three or four lots or something like that, didn't require waivers. The only reason they were coming before you is because they were three or four lots. So that would be our recommendation. Now, if you wanna continue doing things the way that we're doing them now, that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to at least make you aware that this law has been passed and that there are some allowances should we desire to increase those for staff review. So with that, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about and I'll be happy to answer any questions and take any direction that you might 
be willing to, to get to us. Just one quick follow-up, Doug, the seven lots that you mentioned uh, the plats. that you could yeah. have done, um, actually they came through the Planning Commission and the Planning Commission made the exact same decision that staff would have made. Correct. Okay. We need to address that question, I believe, as to whether we want to allow the uh, staff to do the five lots. Um, and, and once again, the chairman thinks that that's appropriate. Uh, it's a change of the way we've been doing, right. but it's also a change of the times. Right. And uh, I feel like it's appropriate. So. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, if we decide to go that route, a couple things would have to happen. First, we would have to uh, bring a resolution similar to the one we brought to the county commission yesterday, allowing us to do five lots administratively. And of course, we would bet that with, with Mr. Christensen. Uh, then we would also have to make some changes to our subdivision regulations uh, to make it consistent with what the wording is right now in TCA. So. The timing of that, I would think, we would probably want the ability, we would want the uh, legislative approval before making the amendments to the subdivision regulations, so there'd be a little bit of a timing element in there, but nothing that we couldn't uh, couldn't handle, but uh, that those are the things I see would have to happen. So proper motion would be to um, approve and uh, allow you to c come back with the resolution so that we can approve that? To the county commission, correct. Does that make sense? Now, then we would have to bring the regulations back through your, this body here for the subdivision regulation changes. So like I said, there's a couple moving parts, but uh, not too complicated. Proper motion would be to move forward and everybody understand. I have a motion and a second to approve moving forward with the five lots. All those, yeah. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. Any opposition? Motion to approve carries, thank you. Thank you. Good job, Doug. Uh, Anything I have, else? I have nothing further. Very good. Our next meeting is scheduled for July the 11th. That will be a 6 p.m. meeting in this room. Yes, and it's, been, it's gonna be a long one too, just so you know. <laughs> We've got quite a bit on it, but go ahead. Cold. Mr. Chair, I see that uh, Superintendent Greg Brooks is now in the audience. Yes. Uh, I'm just saying if, if you would like to call him up, if, if there is appropriate time left to discuss Compton Road, perhaps, um, it's up to you. It's not up to me, it's up to you. You want to make a motion to suspend the rules? Are you, you okay? Yeah, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules for, for Superintendent Brooks. Second. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow Superintendent Brooks to speak, please say aye. Opposition, the motion carries, thank you. Chair Chairman Phillips, if I may, um, and this is just a recommendation, and I understand that Mr. Brooks is here. Uh, it looks like the applicant and the neighbors are no longer here, and because of the possible contentious nature that uh, of, of this item and the deferral, it, it might be in the best interest of the county to wait for Mr. Brooks to address this commission until July 11th upon um, the return of the item, since the item has already technically been deferred. It's just a suggestion. In, in light of that new information, I will withdraw my second to that motion. I believe that would be appropriate. Everybody hates the lawyer, I know. I'm, it's, just, it's just a recommendation. Superintendent Brooks, if you would, you want to make a comment, feel free to do that. Nicholas, I need to apologize for not being here at 9 o'clock. For some reason, I had this on my calendar at 10. I know all these meetings are always at 9 o'clock, but I thought there was another committee that met before this one and that rolled this particular meeting out to 10 o'clock. So I apologize. I, I didn't mean to stand you guys up. I certainly meant to be here. It's understandable. So we'll address uh, in our July meeting. And if, if I, this again, just a suggestion, maybe uh, Ms. Huffmeyer can loop in Mr. Brooks whenever they have the discussion with Mr. Taylor over the item. Okay, thanks. Mike? I have two more points, <laughs> as usual. Um, Sheila, I'm glad you're here because I have two questions for you. Um, the Holton Pipe a project that we just approved a minute ago. Um, I'm very familiar with concrete pipe 
production and I I know that it creates a lot of dust and it's also it gets a lot of sediment in the storm drainage runoff I'm sure you're well prepared to address all that for dust control watering and the stormwater issue that um, you're way on top of that right okay secondly you mentioned on one project after um, the Jake's discussion about an injection well could could on the Jake's property could he like drill a vertical caisson and infiltrate some of that water deeper or or could he do it and could he inject storm water into the deep into the subgrade he could but you just don't know where the groundwater is so around here when it gets high sometimes when they do that the water actually will come up out of it so you can kind of get water from a different aquifer coming up into your injection well so you kind of create an open so he may system. be making it can work if you like know what the aquifers yeah. are um, okay doc i know y'all have probably heard <clears throat> presentations by dr ogden or about the studies he does with groundwaters and wells so it's a it's a lot of studying and you can look at the different well depths in different times of the year so we've done that for um shores road it's it's not just as simple as drilling it and yeah it's going to work because the groundwater water levels around here can get so high just just a thought yeah Doug. Uh, thank you. If there's no other questions for, for Sheila on that, uh, there was one other item I did want to bring up, and that was just to give a quick update to the comprehensive plan. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a meeting with the uh, basically the business nonprofit roundtable. It was a virtual meeting, uh, but it was very well attended, and a lot of good information came out of that uh, that's going into the, uh, right now we're still in kind of the fact-finding, listening phases, if you will. Uh, we're in the process now of identifying folks for the steering committee to start pushing, you know, moving the process uh, forward. Uh, that's uh, something we're working with the uh, consultant right now. Uh, we do anticipate more meetings in the future, uh, but as of, of right, nothing, nothing scheduled at the moment, but uh, things are, are moving along. Thank you, Doug, for that update. Anybody have anything else? Thank you for your time, your patience, and your participation this morning. We are adjourned.